So there are lots of trade-offs in the body, but I think you focused a lot of work on the dangers of making energy and creating reactive like oxygen species, which essentially destroy whatever they touch. Right, right. No, I think that's, that, that's a topic that's getting a lot, a lot of interest, both in biomedical context, as well as in the context of environmental relationships. And essentially, when you're consuming a lot of oxygen to make ATP, your energy currency, you're allowing electrons to flow down what's called an electron transport chain. And unless you control where these electrons are, what they're doing, you can get changes in the chemistry of oxygen that makes it highly reactive. It's when one electron pops onto an oxygen and, and gives it, makes it what's called an oxygen radical. And these are very reactive. They damage membranes, they damage proteins. Now, some of them are beneficial. Essentially burn things, is it? Well, it's, the chemistry is such that, that uh, something like hydrogen peroxide or superoxide is much more reactive than normal oxygen, O2. In fact, mm -hmm. normal oxygen O2 isn't that reactive. I mean, if it were, we'd be incinerated before we got down to have this discussion. Right. But <clears throat> these reactive oxygen species, oxygen radicals, whatever you want to call them, are produce at different rates under different circumstances. An organism that's consuming a lot of food, making a lot of ATP, running a lot of oxygen through its cells would tend to make a higher, you know, higher amount of these reactive oxygen species. And one of the most remarkable inventions in metabolic chemistry is an enzyme called cytochrome oxidase. And it, it's a, it's a comp, large complex protein. And what it is in effect is an oxygen capacitor or an electron capacitor. It so has, what you, what's a capacitor? Well, a capacitor is something that stores charge. We use it in electricity, but what does it mean? Right, well, it means that you're putting electrons, which is electricity, into the system and they're being stored. So you, so you build up a charge as it Kind of like a short-term battery kind of thing. E exactly, and what, what, what becomes of that charge? Well, what you wanna do is discharge the system by putting the electrons that it's storing into oxygen. And you wanna add you know, all the electrons to a molecule of oxygen at once, so you don't have these reactive oxygen ah, species. So if you had just add one or two, then it you're becomes in trouble. a dangerous molecule. Then you, that's right. Then so you're you have in to trouble. get them all together, ready to go, and then go slump. Bing. Yeah. So cytochrome oxidase has copper and iron atoms, which hold on to electrons. And then when you get four electrons in this capacitor, and an oxygen then enters into the protein, you discharge it, and you reduce the oxygen to water. So how widespread in life are these capacitors? Yeah, cytochrome oxidase is found, I think in most, if not all, organisms that have this, you know, the conventional oxygen utilizing pathways for making energy, for making ATP. So you see it in bacteria, animals, plants, fungi. So bacteria have a cytochrome oxidase that's pretty much the same? Uh, I, th I think so, yeah, to the best of my knowledge. They so this, this goes way back. It sounds like oxygen is dangerous stuff to get energy out of unless you do it very carefully. Yeah, and when oxygen began to enter the atmosphere, um, you know, billions of years ago, um, it was good in some ways. It created the ozone shield, for example. Oxygen mm -hmm. got up in the atmosphere, you know, a lot of life to move up on land. But that was much later. Initially, it was probably toxic because organisms. So life must have been very hard for everything back then. Oh, it is. Was yeah, yeah, and I think the development of mechanisms for coping with oxygen's toxicity were as important as the mechanisms that were developed to make use of oxygen. It's produced, so, you know, it's produced photosynthetically as a waste product. And as a waste product, potentially, it's got, there's a lot of energy that you can get from using oxygen in metabolism, but you have to, first of all, deal with its toxic properties. Let's go on in a minute to talk about other ways we protect ourselves against oxygen. 